like Hut. It is time for the Hold the Rope Show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland. Starring Skip Bertman and Dan Canaveri. The latest on the business of sports, LSU sports, LSU baseball, and national sports topics. Here now is the host of the Hold the Rope show, Tommy Chrysan. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. It's the 19th. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the 2023 edition, first one of the year. Skip, how you doing? Happy New Year. Uh, happy New Year to you and to uh, all the viewers. Um, I'm doing very well. Let's uh, do what we do last week. We want to thank uh, our people on last week. Guests last week, we had Lori Bertman, very close to Skip Bertman. Uh, <laughs> My Lori daughter. did a nice job and was very informative. And then, of course... Mike Papa John. Uh, Pistol Papa John. What a man. The man of uh, screen and sports. Uh, the guy does a lot. Uh, we are happy with Papa John. I tell you what, though, this week, super guests. Uh, Mark, this week? This week, we got Name super them. guests. We got Bob Starkey, one of our favorites, associate head coach of women's basketball here at LSU. Great person. And then, uh, and then coming on later on Zoom, we got Kurt Hester, former Ooh. strength coach right at LSU. On time. And now. Fresh back from the Cotton Bowl, uh, where he's the head yeah, strength good, coach at Tulane. Good job, Dan. That was a good get. You know, that's what they call those things when uh, Barbara Wawa. Baba Wawa. <laughs> yeah. When they were talking about her, she was able to get the people on the interview. Yeah, get the and, tough guests. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they're really tough ones, and I don't want to even mention them. But uh, that's a good get. Ooh, nice job. We got Starkey's undefeated, and Hester just oh, won a bowl game. Good I mean, gets. I'm proud of this one. This could be our best guest lineup in a long time. But, uh, Coach, let's talk a little bit uh, here in the, uh, this segment, of course, brought to you by Chinas and Hammond, uh, the restaurant. Get yourself some nice Italian food right there on Kate Street. But, uh, Skip, let's talk about LSU football and their bowl win against Purdue. Lots of records broken with that. Everybody's team. pleased. That's one weekend where every football fan from LSU was super pleased. Remember, we did we had three opt-outs and an injured player. Right. So we played without four starters. Played without some defensive linemen. Like we and lost Ali Gay. We lost Jacqueline Roy. Right. And, Plus uh, the defense, you know, particularly in defensive line. And then we lost Josh Williams to an injury. Right. And our he, best he was running the back. injured guy. But uh, the point I'm making is uh, they played well three quarterbacks. It's the only time in history that three quarterbacks threw for touchdowns in the same game in that bowl, in the Citrus Bowl. From a so, coaching standpoint, very proud of him. Coaching standpoint, I got to give Kelly credit. He used the game well, meaning getting all three quarterbacks in. Walker Howard got his feet wet. Nussmeyer got some some time in. Getting that margin of victory, got to play a lot of guys. That has to help him for his first spring coming up when he has. Yeah, it, it, it's wonderful. Coach uh, who does just a wonderful job uh, at the microphone, which I've mentioned many times, and he thinks all three. We'll be there for the spring. Beautiful. And, yes, and all three will be stay with us. All three quarterbacks. Now he mentioned that, and that's a wonderful thing. And of course, we don't know because of the rules. People could transfer at any time, but that's still a wonderful thing. It's a great school, uh, at LSU. People love it here in Baton Rouge, and that's another reason besides the actual sport. That they like to stay here. Well, I'll tell you what, though, Coach, uh, you know, when you're talking about it, one of the benchmarks of a good season is a 10 win season. 
So congratulations to Brian Kelly here with the bowl game to finish out with 10 wins and win your last game, which is always good yeah. with the fans. Of course, we're going to play two in a row in the Citrus Bowl, one in the bowl game and one to start out the year next year. That's so correct. at least we're acclimated for next year. We know where to eat. We know where the well, hotels are and know the field. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, Brian Kelly is preparing for that all the time. Uh, he's able to get players to understand uh, the pressure barrier right? and how they have to go for 60 minutes and can't look at the scoreboard and all the other uh, deals that football coaches do tell the players. Um, and we don't, we weren't able to substitute any of those defensive linemen. You know, they, enough. Uh, yeah, they played <laughs> the whole game. Yeah. And, you know, Georgia, of course, the best team in the country at this minute, uh, may substitute three times. You know, we put a first set of four, then a second set of four, and a third set. Of, that's incredible. Let me ask you this, Kurt, before we, uh, before we go on and talk about some of the other, the playoffs and everything. Do you think that uh, when they go to the expanded playoff format for the CFP, that with the opt-outs, a couple of things. One, do you think that that could be the end of some of the minor, the other bowl games? Because you're playing bowl games now with half a roster. A lot of guys aren't playing. Mm -hmm. Or secondly, do you think that's going to lead to some of the things that were brought out is that in your NIL deal now, it's, it could be stated that you have to play the bowl uh, game right. in order to get your NIL money. Right. Do you think those things are forthcoming or one or the other? What are you, what's your uh, thoughts on that? Uh, I'm not sure when the guy says I'm going to opt out and get ready for pro football and that month between at the time and the month at the end of the season, I'm not sure what they intend to do. All right. On the other hand, they feel like they can't get hurt if they don't play. Uh, and I understand that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, not many have been hurt, you know, on a, a numbers basis. Uh, plus, you're leaving your team. And I, I don't know. It's easy for them to do that. And the coach, like we, when we lose a guy at the pro professional sports, uh, you know, they make the decision. You know, we don't make the decision. Uh, I'm just very, very pleased for LSU. Coach Kelly, just a wonderful effort. So proud of uh, all of the people involved in football. Well, the CFP playoffs, TCU, the great story this year. It, it and now is. they're going against Georgia. Uh, talk about those games briefly. Well, Coach. they were great, great games to watch. Michigan versus TCU. You watch Michigan and you're watching TCU, and you don't know what's going to happen, of course. And there it is, a touchdown, and then the other team, and then Michigan, and then TCU. And it just goes back and forth. It was wonderful uh, effort by both teams. And then the next game with Georgia and Ohio State, the same thing happened. Right. It wasn't like it was any kind of blowout or runaway. I mean, it went down to the wire. And the funny thing, the games were so good. One of the big things that hit the internet was Kirby Smart's timeout. Yeah. That's when you know you got a, t a tight game when the timeout well, matters. That's one of the things that the television uh, caught uh, when Ohio State lined up on a fourth down to punt, and they were they did run it for a first down. But he called a timeout, and the rule is when the, when, when the official hears timeout, that's when the timeout begins. Whether or not they signal in the scoreboard. And, and, well, even, and even though they haven't done this yet. So that's why the play continued. But he said timeout before the play. Everybody saw that, and, of course, it was a good move by uh, – Coach Smart, and uh, obviously uh, they have a hell of a program. Be a good game to watch. We got to we got to talk about the third playoff game though, Alabama. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Making a point that they really belonged in that playoff as well. Well, in the in the SEC, look at the SEC the the bowl games in which 
an SEC team was involved and check the results of all of them, you know, maybe 10 or 12, you know, different bowls and uh, see how well we did. And, and this year again, you know, we did very well. The point that I'm making is Alabama playing in their bowl blew them away. I, uh, I don't think there's any doubt that Alabama's as good as Michigan or, or TCU. Or Ohio State. Or Ohio State. I don't think there's any doubt. But they only take four. To your question, when they go to 12, uh, yeah, I think that, that what we, we've witnessed so far is the Bulls spend money, Dan, to pay for students to come out. Okay, I think they're going to. I think you're going to see that in every bowl, because that's a factor. Uh, then when you play with twelve, you need a lot of uh, support. I don't mean on TV or watch parties, but I mean at the game site, and that's tough to do once, then again, well, yeah. and then again. Like Dan, even said, if when, you can. Like Dan Radakovich said on our show, when you play. At that site, that's going to make a difference on attendance and crowd. And right, sure. Try, it's kind of like in baseball. You, or well, the it's, playoffs, new, it's new. You're going to try to make sure you get the home field advantage. Well, it's like NIL. It's new. Right. And uh, we'll take care of it in a little show. i tell you what, though. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we are going to talk some NIL. We're going to talk with our guest, Bob Stark, the associate head uh, women's basketball coach at LSU. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Hey everyone, this is Buddy, our new team member. Why are you smiling like that? Jerry Lane Chevrolet, what's your favorite color car? We have SUVs, we have trucks, we have cars, oh, and we have fast cars. Okay, we need this car done by the end of the day. All done. What the? Alrighty, and if you sign right here, we can have your car ready for you. Spreading joy and Christmas cheer for all of Baton Rouge to hear. As owner and operator of Chena Hammond, Chance Kitchen has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. Chena's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute! For a reservation, call 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com. Fat Tuesday's Casino, located in the Plaquemine Truck Stop on Highway 1 in Plaquemine, Louisiana. Come out to Fat Tuesday's Casino, where every day is a carnival. If you're ready to win some money, please visit Fat Tuesday's Casino in the Plaquemine Truck Stop, Plaquemine, Louisiana. Since opening our first Benny's Car Wash location in 1951, we continue to employ the latest in automated car wash technology, from the use of electronic sensor technology to the chemistry and engineering of cleaning agents. Over the years, our car care services have expanded to include detailing, oil changes, state inspections, along with Be Quick convenience stores and fueling stations. After seven decades of successful operations, we are proud to have nine locations serving the Baton Rouge area. For more information, go to Benny'sCarWash.com.
everybody, and welcome back to the New Year edition of Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Uh, we're here. This segment is brought to you by Rooster's Grooming Center. Make sure you stop by Rooster's. Get yourself, you men, get yourself a nice haircut. We're going to gift, good wedding gift, good uh, anytime gift for one of your friends. But uh, we're going to talk now the business of sports. We're going to talk with Bob Starkey, associate uh, head coach of the women's basketball team here at LSU. And... Uh, the Business of Sports brought to you by Blumberg & Associates that specializes in mid to large size commercial accounts of all types. Our agency is currently comprised of three offices located in Baton Rouge, Denham Springs, and Ponchatoula. Although our accounts are largely concentrated in the East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and Tangipoa Parish area, we also handle business throughout the rest of Louisiana as well as Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Florida. That's Blumberg & Associates and Bob Starkey, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Great way to start the year. Skip, why don't you tell the folks about Bob Starkey, one of your favorites? Well, he is. He's, he's one of my favorites because uh, when I came here in 1983, uh, you know, everything was a lot different. Dale Brown, of course, is doing a wonderful job of lifting basketball from nowhere. And didn't you work for Dale Brown? Yes, sir. 13 years. How long? 13. 13 years. Yeah. Uh, he loved you. Okay. And then all of a sudden, he, Bob makes a, a left turn, okay, and starts to coach with ladies for the former coach. Sue Gunner. Sue Gunner, another legend. One, yeah. yeah, for Sue Gunter, of yes, course. Sir. And he's a legendary, wonderful coach. And then when Sue Gunter retired, you were still there uh, with another coach. Yes, sir. All right. And uh, now here you are with uh, what I would consider not just a great coach, but certainly probably one of the five people uh, that are most important in women's basketball in the history. And tell tell me... Tell us what she does, how there's, you know, there is no time out for this or that. She just keeps going, doesn't forget a thing. Go ahead, tell us. Well, she's wired different than anybody yeah. I've ever worked for. Uh, I mean, she's always on. So, you know, she's up in the morning and we're getting a phone call or a text about, did you call this recruit last night? We need to touch base with this booster. Uh, you know, then we have the staff meetings and uh, she's just nonstop in all the details. She cares about every little thing that's relevant to the program. And for the, the, the normal fans, sure, that's recruiting, that's game preparation, uh, that's practice, but it's also taking care of our boosters, making sure uh, the restrooms are clean and the yeah. PMAC, make sure the fan yeah. experience is what it needs to be. Uh, making sure we're, we're, we're uh, communicating with everybody and anybody from, like, like she was ecstatic that you guys would have us on, even though she has her radio sh show tonight. She said, absolutely, tell them we said thanks. But <laughs> sure. just she cares about every little thing that affects the program. Right. Soon, uh, as I've said, uh, they're gonna, you're going to have to play men's basketball at the same time, of course, but soon baseball begins, uh, gymnastics and even softball. And some of the other sports that conflict, you know, the same, that might even be playing at the same time, believe it or not. Uh, on the other hand, we do get the advantage of having maybe 13 or 14 events going on at LSU that weekend, in which you're just one basketball game uh, or one baseball game for that coach. Uh, the important thing I'm making is that at no time, are we going to worry about the attendance um, for ladies basketball? I think last year they already showed that, Bob. Absolutely. I don't think there's a better indicator than our last home game, New Year's Day. Uh, football is uh, all our football fans mm -hmm. that are also women's basketball fans are in Orlando, and we still draw over 7,000. Yeah. You know, I think it's one of the things that makes LSU so incredibly special. We're going to draw. Right. Men's basketball is going to draw. Baseball is going to draw. 
gymnastics is going to drive. I mean, the, the fan base for each individual sport, and obviously there's some crossover fans. I just, I just don't know if there's any place else like it. Bob, well, you were you were involved here, of course, with Sue Gunter and then with Pokey Chapman, and of course when Skip was the AD, he really had a big impact. And I'm going to give you some credit here, Skip, on attendance in women's basketball. Tell the folks what Skip brought to the table as the AD when you were coaching there with you and Joe Carvalito and Sue Gunter. Well, the first thing is 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 we took a minor league baseball approach, and I, you'd have to understand baseball to understand that you, you, you throw it up the wall and see if it sticks. If we came to an idea, Skip said, let's give it a try. And, you know, everything from pack to PMAC to the bookmark game to so many other things. And, uh, and he was so supportive in all of it while also giving us some insight on how he built things with baseball because we were kind of the same place when we took over. There wasn't a lot of great fan support. We were trying to change our culture, create enthusiasm, uh, Spent time with him talking about how to develop our booster club. When I took over oh. my spot with Sue Gunner, we had eight fast break club boosters paying $25 <laughs> a piece. Uh. But, and so Skip goes and, and, and tells me, you were a big help as well about how you recruit those folks, how you take care of them, how you uh, give them accessibility to your staff, to your players, uh, all those things that are important. And, and by the time I left – uh, we had 250 fast break club members <laughs> paying $250. We had another 25 that paid a thousand, and we had 10 that paid five thousand dollars. And it was all because of the, you know, the blueprint that Skip had put out for us. Well, I remember though, you took care of these people, uh, Dan. How would you like to be in the booster club? And you're going to the basketball, women's basketball booster uh, fast break. And there's probably 100, 120 people. And Bob walks in with one of the players. And it's like he gives you the real coaching blueprint for that night. Yeah. And it was really extraordinary uh, how Bob did it. And it worked well. Of course, she is terrific. Your boss now sure. is terrific and believes in those things. And those things... You can do all of those things and still win the games. Absolutely. You see what I mean? It's been proven. Uh, you know, she's already done that. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And I think she'll do it again here as she is. You know, she's already shown that she's going to win here. And I don't mean you win every game, you win the national championship. I mean you run every game and women's basketball spreads out, particularly at this time of year, Right until the final four. Skip, didn't you say, though, when you were the AD, I was working with Skip, and, of course, Bob was grinding it away, trying to pack the PMAC and fill it up, that you felt that women's basketball at that point in time was one of the sports that could lose less money, make more money in attendance, right, and right. help the budget by drawing more people, even if you didn't charge a lot, but you got fans that's, in that's there right. to buy the groceries. I think that was an important part to realize that, don't you think, Bob? Yeah, you you, you got to plant seeds. You know, before yeah. you grow the tree, you got to plant the seed. Uh, the thing about Pack the PMAC was, you know, that first year we we put out fifty thousand free tickets at local McDonald's, <laughs> and we shattered our single game record. And uh, we also broke the record for concessions that game, for uh, money uh -huh. spent on parking. And somebody asked me, what, what's your goal for Pack the PMAC? And our goal was to, to make sure at some point we never had to do it anymore. <laughs> but that was so the, the key with that first Pack the PMAC, though, uh, we brought in over 5,000 fans, which at that time was unheard of. At the end of the season, we're in the NCAA tournament we're hosting, and we sold at NCAA prices 5,500 tickets. The large majority of them, the ones that we had given free tickets to, and, you know. So sometimes you got to give them a little sample. Sure, yeah. Bob. Let me ask you this: uh, we, we, Skip and I in the car driving over, talking about the Mulkey effect. You know, like they talk about the Saban effect. Kim's very innovative. Now, on your staff, you have Jennifer Roberts, who's the first and only, as I think right now in the country, on the basketball staff as NIL director. Is that yeah. correct? What's yeah. her official title? Uh, well, she's, that's exactly what she is. She's our NIL director, and she obviously works with uh, our NIL department, the athletic department, closely, but that's her job daily to help monitor, to help grow it, to work with our student athletes, because there's, there's so much more to this than just getting kids' contracts. Like, 
my biggest fear is about a year from now is a lot of these kids are going to be in trouble with the IRS. Sure. So that part of Jen's job is educating and walking them through all the other mm-hmm. parts of, of the NIL that they, they don't ever think about. And, of course, she's also working outside in the community for future NIL deals. And she is, she's Kim's liaison between all of that. So if, if Kim wants to have a meeting about NIL, she brings Jen in, and, and Jen gets her up to, to date. But uh, it, was, it was a remarkable hire. I mean, it, it, it sh- sent shockwaves out around the country that Kim would be that proactive. Sure. Now, is that, is that pretty much kind of like someone's in charge of the booster club? Someone's in charge of recruiting, and now you get someone in charge of NIL because those three facets are really the lifeblood of your program. Am I correct? They're also very interconnected. You know, you got boosters that want to be part of the NIL deal. Sure. Uh, and and there is nothing, nothing even close to being more important in recruiting than NIL. It used to be facilities. Kids will come play in a <laughs> crappy right, locker right. room now if they got right, that NIL right. deal. You know, <laughs> so your booster club. Uh, your NIL all, recruiting, all that is very, very closely woven together. And I think the best coaches have figured that out early. You know, a lot of coaches don't want to deal with marketing and promotions uh, or they don't want to deal with – well, they're going to get left behind. It's, it's well, just everything matters. You're going to have to deal with this. Uh, the, uh, when they did the Heisman Trophy in New York uh, and the quarterback from uh, – USC was the winner. Caleb Williams, yeah. They flew up. Well, somebody flew up. You know, <laughs> the offensive line in a private jet parked down, then wait for him, stay overnight, and fly him back. So you can do anything with NIL. You absolutely can. Yeah. Basketball player at uh, Indiana, uh, not a famous basketball player. Made national news. This is really something. To be, I mean, on Lester Holt on NBC, and the guy paid off his older sisters. I saw the video. Yeah, you saw the video. His, of, his uh, student loan. It paid off. And I didn't say how much, but I'm guessing it was you know quite a bit. And there isn't anything now that can match NIL and what it is you do with your recruits as, as opposed to, hey, look, we got these new lights over here. <laughs> that used to be big. It used to be big. Yeah. Bob, let me ask you this. We talk about NAL a lot on this show because, of course, it's new, but it's interesting, and it's evolving every day. It sure is. Every day is a new day in NIL every day. world. Where is LSU, especially women's basketball, do you think in the NIL picture as far as the rest of the country goes? Where I'm not do you sure. stand? I'm not sure there's anybody ahead of us. I mean, kudos to LSU. I was at Auburn last year, and the first day the NIL was done, LSU was advertising in Times Square. They already had a plan in place where there were a lot of schools that uh, were not looking forward to the process and yeah. didn't have a plan. Some universities turned it over to their compliance office. Well, you know how that's going to go. No. (laughs) Where at LSU, they created an NIL department and had a plan in place from day one. And coming from Auburn to LSU, I was overwhelmed with how far ahead we were. That's good. That's interesting. And and certainly, I think every coach of every sport would feel the same way at LSU. We have a a young lady there that that heads it up for us, and Scott Woodward has been very proactive in it, and uh, we're reaping the rewards. Well, great. Bob, we're going to take a break. You stay with us another segment. Folks, we're going to be right back with Bob. So we're going to talk a little women's basketball, get into the uh, meats and potatoes of the, uh, of the basketball world. Uh, you're listening to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Please stay tuned. Simple is better. Like Sammy's signature white beans and catfish. Comfort food at its best and simply delicious. Sammy's better than ever. Men long for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barbershop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Roosters, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. 
Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. Don't have time for a cold, a cut, those allergies, or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Bayou Apparel has been helping local businesses communicate their message since 2009. As one of only a few local LSU official licensees, Bayou Apparel offers the highest quality products to showcase your brand. Whether you have an established brand or not, Bayou Apparel design experts can help you create an eye-catching design that fits your company's message. We do logos, event t-shirts, and promotional items for your business. Call 225-928-9090 or go to our website at at www.buyourapparel.com. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has been covering LSU baseball for decades. Their physicians have provided care for players of all ages and skill levels. At Brock, they can treat any kind of injury to the shoulder, knee, wrist, or elbow. Brock is also convenient with six locations in the capital area. Their after-hours clinic is open seven days a week for any type of orthopedic injury that happens at night or on the weekends. Skip and I have been with Brock for all of our orthopedic needs, and you should too. Go to www.brortho.com. For all of your insurance solutions, contact the Allegiance Group in Baton Rouge. Health, life, home, auto, property and casualty, and Medicare. They can enroll you in Medicare or review your Medicare plan. The office is located on Jefferson Highway across from the Bocage entrance. Locally owned and operated, great customer service. Connect on Facebook and Instagram, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions, or call 225-620-6990, the Allegiance Group Insurance Solutions. Hi everybody, welcome back to Hold the Rope. We're here with Bob Starkey, Associate Head Coach of the Women's Basketball Program here at LSU. And this segment, Talking Tigers, is brought to you by Dependable Storage. And Skip, you said you got a story for us. I do. Bob, I want you to remember, do you remember with Sue Gunter? You know, I loved her. We snuck in a statue upstairs. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to ask anybody in a beautiful <laughs> statue. <laughs> You know, we're going to go through nine committees. You know, we just put it up there, and it was great. Do you remember you were ranked, the team was ranked high, but higher, of course, at number one was Tennessee with Pat Summit. Sure. I, as the AD, I was the AD, and I moved the baseball game, as the coach moved the baseball game up an hour, and everybody who finished baseball game could come to the basketball game free. And that night, because of Pat Summit, you had 16,000 people. Yeah. And Sue Gunther just cried. And I was so happy, you know, for her, something that she always wanted, never thought she could. But you can do anything. That's why I believe that now in the scenario that you're in, with the record that you have right this second, uh, if you, with, well, you mentioned some of the good players, and we'll listen. Tell us why you can win the Southeastern Conference and go into tournament play and go far. Well, I think it starts with Kim. I mean, you know, there's, um, there's thermostats and there's thermometers. <laughs> you know, thermometers read the temperatures, thermostat set it. She's, she is one unbelievable thermostat. She sets the temperature in our office and at practice every good. day. 
She turns the heat up. She knows when to cool it. But every day, she's the reason. The, the, of all the things she does, the most impressive thing to me is the messaging that she gives the team. If she may stop practice and say one sentence, and I know exactly what she just planted. The kids may not until the time's necessary, or, or, you know, she may say something, she'll stop filming and, and, and make this little comment or something, but she is constantly messaging the team. So it, it starts with her. Now we, we've obviously got some talented players. You know, you start with Angel Reese. Uh, we've played 14 games. She's had 14 double doubles. That's incredible. That's incredible. Now she's got the record by herself. Now. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, she, she, she's a special player that's starting to draw special attention from defenses now. She can, she's got a great knack, like the great ones do, of rebounding. She rebounds everything. Yeah, Dennis Rodman, <laughs> except she can score. You know, Rodman couldn't <laughs> score. Uh, but she, she thinks every shot's missed, and she has great timing and great effort. And uh, you know, we, got, we got really good point guard play from Alexis Morris, who's a senior for us. Uh, and then we have a lot of really good pieces. You know, Ladeja uh, Williams, who transferred from Missouri. Uh, we talk about the portal. Uh, Jasmine Carson, who transferred from West Virginia. Of course, Angel transferred from Maryland. We got Kateri Poole from Ohio State coming off the bench. So we've got four portal kids. <laughs> and, and, and people think, you know, hey, that's great. You brought, but I promise you, it takes the right kind of coach to blend them in a short amount in a of time. Short time. The team building is so hard when you come from different places, different systems. It really is. You know, I was talking to, to Bruce Pearl last year, and he said, you know, you used to recruit kids to your system of play. Well, now you take this influx of talent, oh, and he says, right. well, in the summer, I look at what I got. I said, am I a three-point shooting team? Am I a press? So you have to be a lot more flexible in your philosophy now because you, you're putting this team together every year. But Kim's been a – uh, an absolute master of getting these kids to play together and share the ball and, and, and be focused. We got some, we got Flage Johnson, the freshman, who just won her second or third SEC freshman. So we've got a lot of pieces. We're still trying to blend them. You know, we're getting ready to get in the grind of the SEC, but we, we, we like what we're seeing. Well, well, who's the competition in the SEC for you to win mm -hmm. it? The top teams you're looking at right now. To, in all honesty, the competition is us. And that's the approach we take, uh, you know. And, and it was like it was a big part of practice today. You know, we we, we beat Vanderbilt by twenty five, but I promise you, we didn't play well. And uh, yeah, you it, had moments where you kind you of do. floated in. You, and out. you know, one of the things I remember Nick Saban saying was was one of the worst things that can happen to a team is play poorly and win, because sometimes it's hard to get their attention. Well, you want to try. You don't want to wait. You, you know, you don't want a loss to get their attention. Uh, but Arkansas is one of the one of the better teams. That's why going there and, and opening up with a road win was big. Uh, Georgia looked really good last night. Obviously, South Carolina is the, the best of the absolute best. Uh, Tennessee has about three or four first-round draft picks on their team. And, you know, it's the SEC. You know, we're, we're getting ready to go on the road, play Kentucky and Missouri, two tough places. So the most important thing is we focus on ourselves and we get better every day and, and, and things will take care of themselves. We're, we're very proud of uh, Kim Mulkey. If you're at LSU <laughs> – you can't say enough. I mean, even a guy like me <laughs> have been to uh, parties, well, or some functions where I've seen her. She's everywhere. She is. And her ability to stay focused at such a high level and then come right in there with the kids is what makes her, you know, coaching icon. You know, not just a good coach, but... A, a super coach, one of a kind. I'm going to make a comment. I'd said this in the car. One thing I notice when you watch the game, especially if you go live, folks, if you haven't seen a women's basketball game, you've only seen on TV and you haven't seen one live, you got to go because Kim's part of the show. It's like WWE <laughs> wrestling. I mean, the outfits, the way she comes in, well, her presence, she plays the crowd. Thermostat. Yeah, the thermostat. She's, I like that. Every, every, everything is orchestrated. I promise you, I know. everything. She doesn't do anything by chance. Yeah. You can tell. But one of the things I think is really special about her <laughs> when you watch it is how the girls react to her. They love her. They would do anything for her. And it reminds me of a guy I used to work for uh, right here. It was a gift. He could get on them. He could... He has plant the seeds. He could work them. The things you're talking about, much what Skip did, much what Saban did. Bob, will you agree the great ones all do the, basically the same stuff? They do, and I think, I think there's two keys. The first one is you have to invest in them. 
not just as, as players but as people. And the second one, whether they want it or not, you got to tell them the truth. <laughs> you got to be honest with them. Sometimes they don't want that, but, but, but you know, down the road they know that's what they need. But if you invest in them and you tell them the truth, then they'll, they'll allow you to coach them hard when you need to. That's it. Well, folks, we want to thank Bob Starkey for coming on the show. We're really excited uh, for the basketball season. Folks, get out there and see some of the women's basketball games. I'm telling you, it's a great show. Uh, great basketball, and it's a lot of fun. Great uh, great times in the PMAC. Bob, thanks. Good luck the rest of the year. And, uh, folks, we'll be right back after this, and we're going to have a special, another special guest, Kurt Hester, the strength coach of the freshly crowned champions of the Cotton Bowl, the Tulane Green Wave. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Hold the Rope with Skip and Canna. Thanks, Bob. Excuse me. Where were you going with all those keys? I was stealing them so that no one would get them as Christmas gifts. I've got a better idea. Why don't you come join us for our Christmas party? But I was just stealing your keys. I know, but I'm inviting you anyway. Why? Because it's Christmas. Maybe Christmas doesn't come from afar. Maybe perhaps Christmas is a Jerry Lane car. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable Storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at DependableStorage.com. Hey, Baton Rouge. When traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, whether you need to fill up your vehicle or your belly, stop by GoMart and On The Go Deli. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you might need on your trip. So stop by GoMart at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left and visit Tom and Wright Granning and their awesome team at GoMart. Advanced Windshield has served the Baton Rouge area for over 20 years. They take pride in the two-technician system where we can ensure a proper seal every time. We will not compromise quality to cut costs by only having one technician in the truck. This also helps us provide quicker services than our competitors. We are dedicated to providing the highest quality work with the quickest service. Go to advancedwindshield.com or call them at 225-248-6788. That's advancedwindshield.com. Doyle Electric has been impacting our community for over four decades. Established in 1978, our work helps to build a better quality of life for ourselves, our family, and friends in our community. Our success is built on core values of excellence, teamwork, integrity, and meritocracy. Committed to excellence, we'd love to hear about your upcoming project and figure out how Doyle Electric can help. Call us at 225-752-5112 or go to our website at www.doyleelectricinc.com. At Baker Gulf Coast Industrial, a full-service civil and deep foundations contractor, every day is a chance to play for the winning team. We're looking for first-string players to help us build the future of the region. Yeah. Success on our field is defined by grit, tenacity, and the will to get the job done right the first time. You'll gain the advantage with steady work, excellent pay, and plenty of opportunities to advance. Apply today to join our team at BakerGCI.com. That's B-A-K-E-R-G-C-I.com. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to Hold the Rope, this week's edition of Hold the Rope. And uh, it's time for an, our next guest, and uh, it's time to talk a little dugout talk, but we're going to change it this week to Tulane Talk. And uh, our guest is uh, uh, it's brought to you by Hudco Roofing, of course, and Hudco has become one of the area's premier product, uh, professional roofing contractors specializing in residential roofing services. Our team of highly trained and certified roofers have a combined four decades of industry experience. Whether you need a simple repair or a complete roof replacement, our licensed insured contractors have the skills to take care of all of it. Call Hudco today at 
414-6153 to learn more about our residential roofing services, quality workmanship, premium products, and unparalleled customer service. That's Hudco Roofing. And now it's time to go to a little two-lane talk brought to you by La Carreta Restaurant and our guest, the one and only Kurt Hester. Kurt, come on board. There he is, the big guy. <laughs> What's up, guys? Uh, Kurt, wonderful to see you. Uh, every time I mentioned it, uh, uh, I always think about the 1997 when he showed up. Oh, you know when the old football coach wouldn't let you leave, right? You trained yeah. the you trained the baseball team the whole year, but you were also assistant in football, and they were doing spring workouts and and going through it. And uh, the coach wouldn't let you leave, but you said I'm going on my own, and you showed up with your cutoff yeah. shirt. Your cut off pinstripe baseball oh, the pants, kid, and the kids went, went nuts. I, I, well, it's I, a wonderful I for missed, you. I missed the 96. Uh, you know, I missed the 96 one because I had to stay and work uh, football camp. And then when 97, um, they wanted me to stay because uh, the head guy was the head training coach, was uh, didn't enjoy his, his one week off uh, in Florida because it rained, so he wanted to stay another week. And they said, oh, you can't go. You got to stay because there's like four or five guys in town. So I decided, you know what? I missed one national championship. I'm not missing a second one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we loved you. I'll tell you what. I did notice in the newspapers before the big win uh, when one of Dan's former players. Uh, Keith Hennigan. Yeah, Keith Hennigan <laughs> put in a paper that uh, strength coach mainstay behind Ella behind Tulane's football success, and it says in here that you <laughs> you learned a lot from Gail Hatch. Of course, she's the greatest, and Tom Shaw. He's another weight man. He's a, he's one of the first speed guys in in speed. college football. So he's a right. speed guy, and Skip Bertman. Oh. Okay, what'd you well, what'd you just... learn from Skip? <laughs> You learn weightlifting from Skip? Is that it? Weight training? <laughs> no, just sitting in the dugout. Just sitting in the dugout, sitting in meetings, um, listening to uh, how you uh, communicated with the athletes on different situations, whether it was a great play, a bonehead play, just different situations in different moments. Um, you know, uh, like when we went on the, uh, to play Alabama, when they were ranked number one at Alabama, and we just needed to win one game, and we – would outright win the SEC, and you know we'd gotten uh, we lost the first game was kind of close, and then we got destroyed in the second game, and then the way we came back and what was said, you know, in the team meetings uh, to get guys focused uh, and to get them to relax because you, you said that they were gonna they were gonna stiffen up, they were gonna be tight, and they weren't they weren't gonna they, were, they weren't gonna hit their pitches and they weren't gonna swing the bats, and all we had to do was hit hit our zones and swing the bat, and we'd win the game, and we came out and and destroyed them in the last game and won the SEC and then went on to, to the World Series. But just the way you communicate get with guys and had a feel for what motivated them, uh, you know, and each guy was a different a different cat. Uh, and that's, I mean, I learned more by just sitting in a dugout and listening uh, and watching the game, even though I'm not, I, I was never a baseball guy, I was always a football guy. Um, and just the way you handle the team in different high-pressure situations. Good for you. Uh, to be in the dugout or to be in meetings uh, at Tulane uh, or LSU or wherever and get the coaches' uh, insights and then move it over into your skill level uh, with strength. And uh, we remember we were big home run hitting teams. In order to do that, our kids had to be big and strong. Uh, you made them – feel like they wanted to weight lift uh you made them feel like there was some kind of a benefit for weight lifting beyond being just stronger and having muscles yeah hmm. you showed them the work ethic that they needed in order to be able to hit the ball a great distance or drive it through the infield and they're uh, very very proud of you and Dan, before you go, I just want to jump in and say uh, what Keith said in the newspaper is a wonderful thing. In my opinion, I also agree with one of the uh, sports editors in the 
not a sports, just a regular editor. In the advocate, this win was the biggest win in Tulane history. What do you think about that? I mean, being, a, being a graduate of Tulane, you know, uh, and the fact that even when I was there, they, you know, the uh, academic side voted to get rid of football every year I was there. Um, for them to wow. not be, yeah, for them to be, in, you know, and almost in the 90s, they, they, they talked about in the early 90s, um, about dropping it to division, division three, um, yes. like, like Harvard and Cornell and, and Brown. And, um, you know, they haven't been, it was the, uh, the sugar bowl in 1933, they played temple, uh, was the last time they were in a new year's day bowl. Uh, you know, and so just, you know, going from, you know, two and 10 to 12 and two and, uh, you know, in one season and winning the cotton bowl and, and beating a, a very, very talented USC, USC team with the Heisman Trophy winner. It was just a, it really, it was just an insane year of everything just kind of kept falling in place week by week. And um, it was, it was, you know, we had a lot of seniors who, who had, uh, you know, were very leadership driven. Um, and so it was, it was, it was, a, it was a wonderful ride. I mean, it was, it was something that, you know, probably 99% of college football teams never experience. So, and then at Tulane, and definitely at Tulane, it, you know, 80 years, it hasn't happened. So it's been phenomenal. Kurt, I got to ask you a question, of course. You said turnaround, 2-10 to 10-2, and two, Cotton Bowl win. Uh, you came on board with the new coach, am I correct? Or were you there before, Willie Fritz? No, no, I just got it. I, I came in in January. And so you came in in January. Let me ask you this. You talked about being in the dugout and being in the meetings. Okay, as a strength coach, you're one of the coaches, but you're in a different world. You're kind of in your own world. What do you see was the difference? What turned the page? What flipped the switch with the new coaching staff, Willie Fritz, to turn it into a 10-2 and two season? What did you see in all your experience in athletics? I mean, we, they, you know, we, they changed some of, the, um, some of the offensive coaches. Uh, we had a bunch of new offensive coaches come in, new offensive coordinator, and the players bought into the offensive system relatively quick. Um, and I think there was a very cohesive staff where all, you know, the, the, you know, a lot of times in a lot of programs, like the offense kind of fights with defense and back and forth trying to get, I guess, a balance of power, but it was never like that. And the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a strength coach who loves to have fun and, um, you know, I don't make training miserable. I make, you know, I, 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 you know, it's, I'm very educated, education, uh, uh, bias with everything we do. So they understand every lift, every speed uh, exercise, every modality that we do and why it helps them. They see it on a daily basis because we do so much testing throughout the week and they can see improvement in their speed, in their verticals, in their broad jumps, in their strength, um, in the way they move with, uh, in, in movement, um, with deceleration, acceleration. And the fact that it, 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 they didn't walk in miserable. They walked in wanting to train and wanting to get better and wanting to have fun. And, you know, we, we pretty much did it the entire year uh, from all the way through the season. And a lot of times during the season, teams don't like to train. Players, you know, especially in football, you're beat up. You know, um, you know it's, it's a long season. Every game, every practice you get beat on. And we got guys healthy quick. Uh, and they can see the benefit in staying Staying fast and staying strong uh, throughout the season, and which brought us—I mean, we ended up. It was 18 weeks by the time we got to the bowl game, 18 or 19. It was like an NFL season. So, um, you know, we we did a really good job of of keeping the load down on on the players so that they could perform at the highest level. Well, it's a great job of explaining that, Kurt, because I remember a time where Tulane was going to give it all up, like you said and be like Brown or one of the Ivy League schools. And uh, then I read in the paper this morning, we're a football school. We're smart because Tulane obviously has a great uh, reputation around the country academically. We're right. smart and we're a football school. <laughs> I got a big kick out of that. And uh, I think it's the biggest win they've ever had. And I'm very proud of Willie and the other coaches and uh, you have explained it as if you were one of the stud coaches, and we really appreciate that. 
and uh, we we don't want you to leave or change anything. Uh, but I want to go back to Dan, and he's gonna. We got to. Uh, we want you to come back. We got to yeah. take a break here. We want to come back. We want to talk a little of your time at LSU and uh, and uh, chop it up a little bit about LSU baseball when you were here. You were such a big part of it. So, Kurt, stay with us, folks. We'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano with Kurt Hester. Famous cheese sticks are the. Sammy's better than ever. Have you been arrested for DUI or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. Mom, what's for breakfast? Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Lake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. La Carreta is the place for after-work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Everybody's got a guy, and I got a guy. That's right. They can handle monthly maintenance around your business or home with their professional team members. Ask us how to get set up and what plans we offer. I got a guy. One call for most trades. Not sure who to call? Reach out to us. Our skills are broad across many, many trades. Hourly rates are available. If you want one of our team members for a couple of hours, we can get that done. We can execute everything from house calls to running errands. I got a guy. Call 985 6 662-0025 or send an email to info at I got a guy service.com. Are you a business owner? Could you use up to 26,000 back per employee? Employee retention credit program allows business owners to request a credit on payroll wages that they paid in 2020 and 2021. Go tax resolution, a division of Garrity and Associates has been helping clients apply for funds for over a year with former IRS agents reviewing the documents and building an audit trail. You are sure to maximize the credit opportunities. Best yet is this company will evaluate your entire account at no charge. And when they have qualified you and done all the work, we'll give you a total on a fee basis. Call GoTax Resolution today and see if you qualify. Call 985-722-1040. I'm Tommy Chrysan of Talking Sports with TK, and I invite you to check out my podcast, available on all major platforms. Wherever you get your podcast, search for Talking Sports with TK. We'll certainly talk a lot of LSU sports, sports across the state from Louisiana, national topics, Major League Baseball, you name it, Talking Sports with TK. We've been around for quite a while. Again, available wherever you get your podcast, search for it, Talking Sports with TK. I'm Tommy Chrysan. Hopefully, you'll enjoy my podcast very very soon. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to this uh, this edition of Hold the Rope. This segment brought to you by Citizens Bank, and we're going to do a little talk in baseball. We got Kurt Hester. We're going to talk a little LSU baseball when Kurt was here, maybe a little bit of Southeastern baseball when Kurt worked with our players at uh, Southeastern when I was there. And, Kurt, we got you back on the air here? Yes, sir. All right, well, Kurt – I want to say this to you. One of the things you mentioned and uh, off the air, I was talking to Skip about it, is when you were talking, I wanted to say when you work with my guys at Southeast and, of course, the guys at, uh, at LSU that you work with, you always made it fun for the guys. Like, they enjoyed lifting weights. Your personality came through, and they enjoyed it. And you got them to get on board. And I was telling Skip off, off camera, 
I said, at Southeastern, we'd lift after practice, and literally the guys would come and say, hey, coach, take it easy today because we got Hester tonight, and we want to give him a good outing. And, you know, meanwhile, I said, guys, we're not a powerlifting team. We're a baseball team. Yeah, but it's too good. And uh, so having fun, I want to I say this to you. Talking about having fun, do you remember in 97 when you went to the Omaha? Remember, you win the, cha- you win the game to get you in the championship, and Skip always had this tradition with all the fans that grew as you stayed out there, that we would have an impromptu banquet uh, the night before the championship game. It was really the last right. time we could get together. Is that true, Skip? We'd always kind of throw that together. And uh, that was the year we set the record for 188 homers. Okay. Well, Skip gets up and he's talking about the coaches. And you know, he says, hey, Dan Canterbury, he's a nice guy. He throws batting practice. He's a great coach. <laughs> okay. Then he's talking. And he said, folks, we set the record. For home runs this year, and the guy, the coach, that was tremendous, probably the most important guy for that record, and Jim Schwanke, our hitting coach, was sitting next to me, and his chest grew three inches at this moment in time. And he was ready, and Skip goes, Kurt Hester, the strength coach. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I, I also like to have a good time. Uh I watched and noticed that you did that with your uh, athletes. Uh, that's urgent what you did, you know, that you have the personality and you're able to do that. And I want to applaud and compliment you uh, on your career. But I can't say enough that you're part of this. Without you, they don't have 12 and 2. I'm very, very proud of you. Appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, Dan, now, Kurt, you've been through some national oh, cha- you've been through some national championships with us in '96, '97, '97 out there the whole time. What was it like at the Cotton Bowl compared to the national championships? That celebration. It, I mean, it's two two completely different animals. I try yeah. to explain that to people. Where baseball, you know, it's um, you know, you 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 don't get like super. You can't get super up. You can't get down. You have to you know you have to maintain you know steady. It has to be steady. Um, and you have so many games, whereas football, it's, you know, it's when you're in, typically, you know, you're in and out really quick. It's super, super intense, super, uh, you know, high stress. Um, so the, the mentality is different, but as far as like the, the, the national championship games themselves, uh, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like a national championship game, you know, whether it's baseball or football, but I mean, for a two lane for them to have almost 30, I think 35,000 fans, uh, which I didn't know we had that many, uh, show up at the Cotton Bowl. Fairweather and, fans, yeah. they showed up at the end, right? Oh, uh, well, I mean, it's, you know, you know, Jerry's World's humongous. And there's like, let me see, I think five, five different layer sections. And we were on our side of the field from end zone all the way around the end zone. We were sold out to the top. Beautiful. And it was unbelievably loud. I mean, it was, I mean, just the energy was, was, was phenomenal. But we did. We set three Yulman Stadium records at the end of the season, uh, you know, as far as attendance. Um, when we played SMU, uh, Central Florida, and, um, and uh, well, Central Florida twice. So, um, you know, it, it was phenomenal. But, I mean, there's nothing – There's, you know, I kind of sad about uh, Rosenblatt because there's, like, nothing like Rosenblatt as a stadium and as, a, you, know, uh, you know, going to – you know, setting your standard to go there every year. But uh, I don't know if y'all remember this, but, uh, you know, Skip had asked me, hey, how, you know, kind of how big can we get this team? And I said, well, you know, we don't have any supplements for baseball. And he, he said, well, how much do you need? I said, I, I just threw a, a number out the top of my head. I said, I don't know, like ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. And he's like, done. So we actually had more supplements at the time than football did. I had an entire <laughs> school room full of supplements. And they were so jealous coach can i get some creeds and coach can i get this and man that's that's baseball stuff and uh and then i had made those, those shirts that said uh no i'm not on steroids but on, and on the back said the pink's <laughs> nasty and, uh, yeah that's right that's right i had those made and then uh del monica we played tennessee remember we got in that fight at tennessee <laughs> sure and do. Del monica was like, complaining about how big we were yeah and, like, the team was on steroids well i actually a friend of mine was the head shrink coach there at Tennessee, so I got his home address. And I actually mailed him one of those shirts. Ah! 
Oh, I didn't know that, but boy, I wish I wish I could have signed that shirt first. <laughs> oh, that was wow. beautiful. Yeah, you're right. That's the coach that uh, went to his athletic director and went to Joe Dean and said, well, it's not fair. They're all on steroids. And, of course, Joe Dean's, well, you know, we'll have to check. I said, Joe, it costs money to test, and you don't spend any money ever. <laughs> but Joe found how to, how to test everybody for steroids, paid for it, but to his disappointment, he found that we didn't use steroids. We had a great strength coach. I'm very, 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 very you got a free fond of that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kurt, I got to ask you this one. Working uh, right now at Tulane, you just work with football. Is that it? Right, I do. And you I oversee been, the other guys. Yeah. Well, I've been like uh, for for Coach Holm. I've been kind of like his interim his interim strength coach. Uh, he's lost his, and so I, I came in and said, "Look, I'll take him over." And actually had a, a great time. And he, he went to he went to the AD and said, hey, we want Curtis as our strength coach. I was like, man, I, you know, coach, I don't know if I can do both jobs at the same time. Now, the way baseball is now, where the strength coach actually travels sure. with the team all the time. And so it's a whole different ball game than it was, uh, you know, when, when, when I was a strength coach, and, you know, with, with baseball at LSU. Because uh, I had, I mean, I had football, I had basketball, I had baseball, I had uh, women's golf. I had uh, women's soccer, and I had the cheerleaders. I had all those teams, so I was working from five thirty in the morning to about eight o'clock at night, just about every day. And you know, so now it's just you know, it's, it's football only. But I do help out with other sports when they when they need me. Kurt, let me ask you this. My my question was going to be this: working with baseball and football players. Tell the folks the difference between working them out and the type of workouts they do, and the mentality of the workouts. Well, I mean, I think. When I look back at you know, and y'all tell me if I'm wrong, but I look back at our at the LSU guys. I mean, y'all recruited a lot of guys who were like really good football players. You know, they were probably FCS football players, but very but FBS baseball players. So we had we you know I think y'all you know the two the you know, 96 97 teams had guys who were like very you know they were aggressive humans at na by nature. And <laughs> what I was doing what I was doing in the 90s. Um, I was getting vilified by most baseball, like the major leagues, for doing some of the things I was doing with LSU baseball because LSU is a power sport. It's a speed power sport. So we were training for power and for speed. And people are like, you can't do that because it's baseball. I said, well, you can. Now, yet there's a certain mentality you have to you go with, with pitchers because of, because of throwing and pens and, and, and arm care. And, but at the same time, it's still – a game of when you move, you move fast and you move explosively. And now, which is kind of funny, I mean, you know, it's been what over twenty, over twenty, twenty something years that now in Major League Baseball they have adopted that philosophy and they're training that way twenty twenty plus years later. Good for you. That's absolutely true, folks. Uh, at the time we did that, uh, we were way ahead, and of course, Major League Baseball. Uh, you know, had all kinds of things you're supposed to do, but they were not ready. You know, they were behind. And today, of course, they're changed so many things as they're catching up. But um, one of the things they're catching up on is strength. And now they even eat better in the major leagues. You know, they're doing a much better job. But you were there before, like you said, 20 years beforehand, and you were part of uh, national championship teams that uh, contributed just like uh, Dan did as a pitching coach and knowledgeable pitching coach in other areas. And just as much as Schwanke, who really was a good hitting coach, and others. Uh, but people just don't realize. And talking to... Uh, our last guest in basketball, uh, he he mentioned we mentioned uh, Kim Mulkey, you know, coach at basketball now. She does everything, <laughs> and at the time we were trying to do everything, but it was hard then. You know, there was financial uh, problems, but when it came over to you, you picked it up, see, and then the players loved to go. And I knew that that made a difference, see. So I want to say to you, 
uh, congratulations on this big win. Uh, you know, I'm all for uh, Louisiana teams, uh, root for the SEC, of course, but naturally for Louisiana teams. And then I was really excited for Tulane and excited for uh, you, know, you and all the coaches and players. They have at least uh, one running back who's going to play in the NFL. Yes, sir. He will be drafted. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, but your quarterback's got a lot of courage, uh, smarts, uh, age. You can see that he's been there a while. And uh, he did a great job, uh, Pratt, uh, right? Yes. Yeah, he did a great job. Yes, and uh, uh, t tell, uh, you know, uh, Willie that I said congratulations. And, I will. He's and, a great coach. Yeah, he is. A wonderful effort and great job. Dan? Kurt, I want to say to you, it's got to be special for you to be a Tulane grad. You played football at Tulane. Now, is that with the Southeastern first, then, then That's Tulane? That's right, Southeastern, then Tulane. But being a Tulane grad, going back to your alma mater and being part of history, that's got to be special for you. And so congratulations to you, your lovely wife, and all your family. you got too many kids. I mean, you got lots <laughs> of kids. They're all good looking. They're all strong. I'm, I'm jealous. I, I mean, come on. You got a great life, but you've worked your butt off all these years. You stayed with it, and you changed a lot of lives. And I was lucky to have you twice, LSU and Southeastern, and I know you changed the course of a lot of guys' lives and had a positive influence. And I thank you for that. Thank you for being yeah. on the show. Best of luck to you with Tulane and down the line. No, thank you. Y'all y'all, impacted my career more than y'all know. Thanks. Thanks, Kurt. Folks, we'll be back after this. You're watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Kano on YouTube. Okay, we're right on time. Hey, everyone. This is Buddy, our new team member. Why are you smiling like that? Jerry Lynn Chevrolet, what's your favorite color car? We have SUVs, we have trucks, we have cars. Oh, and we have fast cars. Okay, we need this car done by the end of the day. All done. What the? Alrighty, and if you sign right here, we can have your car ready for you. Spreading joy and Christmas cheer for all of Baton Rouge to hear. for a simpler time when they could sit back and relax in a leather chair with a hot steamy towel for a clean cut and straight razor shave. At Rooster's Men's Grooming Center, you can enjoy the comforts of that old school barber shop with a modern twist. Our stylists and barbers are skilled in classic and current styling techniques to give you the look you want. Rooster's, the grooming destination for guests of all ages. Two locations to serve you, Highland Park Marketplace and Town Center. With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. If you live on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain and you have a son or daughter that plays baseball or softball, you need to know about Six Rings Baseball Camps. Held at beautiful Coquille Park Recreational Facility and run by Dan Canterbury, Six Rings will teach baseball skills, play instructional games, and have fun playing the great game of baseball. Go to our website at www.sixringsbaseball.com for more information on our upcoming Thanksgiving and Christmas baseball camps. Six Rings Baseball. Learn the game to love the game. As owner and operator of China Hammond, 
Chance Kinchin has spent 20 plus years in the restaurant business and has taken inspiration from a multitude of sources and put them into what he considers to be the ideal establishment. As a Hammond native, Chance still has a strong attachment to the community in which he was raised. Chena's goal is to use local ingredients and delicious recipes to create an exceptional dining experience while also providing a fresh and inclusive atmosphere that can be enjoyed by everyone. Salute for a reservation called 9 985-622-3222 or go to the website at www.cnahammond.com Hi everybody and welcome back to the final segment of Hold the Rope with Skip and Ken. I want to thank our guest Bob Starkey and of course Kurt Hester with us, and uh, now it's time for our motivational moment brought to you by Marucci Sports. Remember, this segment is brought to you by Premier Health, but our motivational moment, Marucci, as a company founded and operated by current and former big leaguers, Marucci is dedicated to quality and committed to providing athletes at every level with the tools they want and need to be successful. We owe it to the game to challenge convention and leverage technology to power a new level of performance. We know what it takes because we stood where you stand. Embrace the game, show your style, add your flair, put in the hours, stay dedicated, and most importantly, honor the game. That's Marucci Sports. Coach, it's time for the motivational moment, and you got a special one picked out, one of my favorites. It's amazing how we had a little bit uh, from uh, Hester about uh, tension, uh, nervousness, uh, actual fear fear of failure and uh, I had a story that would would take the uh, team you know right in maybe the beginning of a super tournament where there was some fear even it could be in Omaha but usually some b tournament and it was big time I'm gonna tell you how this story works remember I go out in right field I gather all the boys around. All right, they're looking to me, and I'm looking at them. And I give them this story about fear and pressure. Pressure doesn't have to be a destructive force, boys. Yet pressure can produce amazing results. Diamonds are formed through pressure. Both soot, and then I would say S-O-O-T, which is soft black and virtually worthless, and diamonds, which are harder than any other natural substance, transparent and sometimes priceless, are made of carbon. The difference is that soot forms at an ordinary temperature and pressure. Diamonds at temperature and pressure equivalent that exist a hundred and 50 miles below the Earth's surface. Anything that can take that kind of physical pressure must be great. Humans can't handle that kind of physical pressure, but they can withstand great amount of emotional pressure. Athletes have that kind of pressure. You surely feel it. But I'm the one who may, what if I'm the one who makes the error and loses the game? It's natural, especially in a program like ours. But you have to use fear, boys. Fear, false evidence appearing real. Fear is like fire. When you control it, you can cook with it, you can keep it warm, but when not controlled, it can burn up everything around you. When fear is controlled, it'll make you better. Fear is an ally, face it head on. What is real and what is false, that's what always matters and will make make sure that even if you fail we will love and support you your teammates will love and support you you too are you're, you're prepared you have practiced hundreds of hours so many weeks and months the coaches have prepared you for tonight's series remember false evidence appearing real Remember, support it no matter what the outcome. You've been prepared, rehearsed, practiced for this event, 
many times. Talk to your fear. What your mind intellectualizes, your body actualizes. Control it. Use your talents. Tonight you represent LSU, your family, and your maker. Have fun and play like champions. Uh, I'd also, Dan, I'd have other stories about fear of fighter pilots having, you know, 75 seconds uh, to make a difference between (laughs) whether it's an opponent or an ally and, you know, whether to use their, you know, ammunition or not. This is just a ball game, but there is some fear of failure involved in any of those uh, TV events we watched this weekend. One of the things you always talked about to the players is you got to crash through the pressure barrier. Got to crash through. Okay, there, there's – whenever you play a sport, especially at the level that we play at at LSU or Tulane or some of the great schools that play, and like you're saying, when now you multiply it when you play on TV, you play in front of your parents and all the pressure that's there – you have to embrace that and break through the pressure barrier. If you avoid it, you can't play. If you can't. don't realize it's there. But once you realize it's there, you accept it and you learn to get through it. Once you got a guy to crash through the pressure barrier, we knew he could play. Oh, it's the greatest. And we knew we could win championships. But you had to get all the team to crack yeah. that barrier. And if a guy couldn't crack the barrier, no matter how talented he was, he couldn't play for us. Yeah. And so it's a good story. Of course, Diamond's under pressure. That's always a great story. Folks, we're going to come back and wrap it up on this first edition of 2023. Hold the rope with Skip and Kennel. Stay tuned. A burger so big, it's got its own gravitational pull to keep you coming back. Oh, and tasting freaking awesome could have something to do with it, too. Sammy's better than ever. Don't have time for a cold? A cut? Those allergies? Or a sprain? I really don't have time for this. Blake Urgent Care is here to help with easy, convenient online check-in, virtual visits, or walk-in care. Plus, we're kid-friendly and open seven days a week, including holidays and weekends. When you don't have the time to be sick or hurt, feel better faster at Lake Urgent Care and Lake After Hours. Life's about happiness and stuff. Think about it. When you're single, you own some stuff. Then you get married. That's like double the stuff. Here come the kids. Even more stuff. Tons of stuff. Then the kids move out. What do you do with all that stuff? Dependable storage has you covered. Our sliding doors are easier to use than those roll-up doors and just as secure. Dependable storage wants your stuff. And with seven locations, why go anywhere else? Check us out at dependablestorage.com. La Carreta is the place for after work fun, but that's just the beginning of why we've been in South Louisiana for over two decades. Follow your nose to the best Mexican grill and experience fresh ingredients, fun indoor and outdoor dining, and fast and friendly service. Like our Facebook page for event news and live music announcements. Visit CarretaRestaurant.com to find daily specials for your local La Carreta. Fresh, fun, and festive, it's where the fiesta begins. Do the words investing, 401k, mutual funds, IRA, and annuities have you worried or confused? The team at Altus Wealth of Mickey Gidry, Ronnie Brown, Jesse Daigle, Brad Ewing, Wally McMakin, Jeremy Perkey, John Reeder, John Stewart, Clay Moffitt, and Dixon McMakin are ready to help with all your financial and estate planning needs. Find them at www.altuswealthmgt.com or call 201-9300. That's 201-9300. Are you a baseball fan, LSU fan, sports fan, or success fan? Purchase your copy of Everything Matters in Baseball, the story of the building of the most successful college baseball program in history. This book details the path to the decade of excellence culminating in five national championships in 10 years at LSU. Starting from humble beginnings, Skip Burtman changed baseball to LSU, the SEC, and the entire college baseball world. 
Get your copy of this entertaining and inspiring story today by going to www.acadianhouse.sports.com. Everybody and welcome back to the final segment here of uh, Hold the Rope with Skip and Cano. Uh, before we close it up, Skip, we want to talk a little bit. I was driving uh, here to Baton Rouge today, got my new home in uh, Covington, and uh, driving along, and I hear on the radio that this weekend, the two playoff games, 28 million viewers for the two playoff games. Tell us your thoughts on that. Right. I think that's tremendous uh, record. And I think that when you see on the ninth, the single game for the national championship will be a college, you know, record as well. I think people are really picking up. I think, of course, the networks do a much better job of bringing you the game, replaying the downs. It's a killer for them that the teams are going so fast. Because now they can't replay the play. Yeah, when they go with tempo, they can't get all the good stuff in there. Herb Street's tongue-tied. But, uh, can't tell the straight. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, though. The one thing is that, that we can see from this is, like you said, got to be 32, 33 million next week when they play that game watching. It would seem so. Got to be. Yeah. But the thing is, we're moving with NIL, Transfer Portal, yeah. TV, uh, playoffs, moving to 12 teams in a year or two. Yeah. There's no doubt that we're going with an NFL-type model for college football. Would you agree? Oh, sure. I mean, it's uh, TV-driven. Yeah, it's TV-driven. Uh, and as uh, one of our as our guests mentioned, there are probably no recruits that don't have some kind of NIL help. Okay. I would say in the minor sports, too, the next thing is – I don't think there's any walk-ons, right? Like in baseball or other sports yeah. or equivalency sports. I can't. I don't yeah, think I can't. you're going to see. I can't. In other words, the the coach could say, "Can't give you a scholarship, but I can do this." <laughs> we used to give a thirty-five percent scholarship. Now they just give them nil money, which same thing. Yeah, sure. So I, I think it's a whole different ball game out there. Of course, we'll be talking about it all year. But folks, we appreciate you watching our wardrobe. Provided by Bayou Apparel. But next week, we don't have our guests yet with the holidays, but we're going to have some great guests as we always do. And, uh, Coach, looking forward to talking some more. We'll talk about the national championship game. And, All right. Uh, Good job, Get Dan. ready for LSU baseball. Going to start practice. Women's basketball undefeated. Men's basketball, only one loss. Getting into SEC play. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah. This is silly season. There's 15 events every week Things going at LSU. On. So this is a great time. Folks, please keep watching us. If you haven't signed up, watch us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. We'll be back next week. You've been watching Hold the Rope with Skip and Kendall right here on the FM Digital Media Network. Rope Show, presented by Jerry Lane Chevrolet, Find New Roads, and Sammy's Grill on Highland. Join us next Tuesday at 6 p.m.